Hi, welcome back. ABC Networking here with the ClearPass demo series. And um, this is an extra edition. Um, so in the past uh, sessions we did onboarding, both for wireless and for wired. But uh, some viewers attended me on the fact that I didn't show how to configure the backend for uh, for ClearPass. And I think it's uh, very good to show that as well. So we did show uh, how you can uh, configure the services um, on the ClearPass side, but we didn't show how to configure those nice pages that bring you uh, through the onboarding cycle. So I decided to uh, insert an additional uh, episode to explain uh, that to you as well. So here on the dashboard we can go to ClearPass Onboard which will open a new window and here we have the settings that are for uh, onboarding. So I started uh, and I start typically by creating my own certificate authority. So there is a certificate authority built into the product uh, but to make it uh, very clear I typically create my own certificate authority and uh, for those, uh, uh, for that uh, authority, I uh, pick my own name so I can recognize it. Um, I fill in here the details, uh, like my country and uh, and so on. And I um, put in uh, the private key and I typically choose for uh, 4096 bit RSA. Not really required, uh, but to make it as uh, strong as possible and uh, sometimes I increase the lifetime of the CA from uh, the standard 10 years uh, to, for example, 30 years. So you will know that um, this CA will never um, expire. Um, when we created the CA, then uh, we need to create some network settings. Network settings are the settings that are pushed to the client. Again, there is an uh, example network uh, out of the box available uh, you can change that uh, for your own network but i typically choose to create a new network and have my own uh, settings so you recognize it's your own and you have seen all these settings and uh, as you can see we have uh, two here one is uh, just for wireless um, which is used in my case for wireless uh, onboarding and the other one is for uh, the wired as well and the big difference is that uh, the first one will only configure the wires, wireless network um, and this one will as well uh, configure the uh, wired network. So here you can choose uh, wireless, uh, wired or uh, wired and wireless. And this is what we used for the second uh, edition of this, uh, this podcast series. This is also the place where we configure uh, the SSID to connect to and uh, the security settings um, and yeah, WPA2 with ES, that's the recommended and the default setting uh, as well. I don't really uh, change a lot of set uh, settings here, uh, but if you want, uh, you can do that. So here are the default settings for all the platforms that can be onboarded. Um, use TLS uh, wherever you can. Uh, only for very old uh, OSX versions, so below um, 10.5, um, there's no TLS support uh, for onboarding, uh, and you can use a username and password uniquely provisioned for those devices um, as well. Here on authentication, uh, you can select for Windows clients if the certificate needs to be uh, placed in the user certificate store or in the uh, computer certificate store. Uh, please note that for the user certificate store, you don't need to have administrative uh, access on the client system for Windows. For machine uh, authentication, you do need administrative access, uh, access on the client. So I typically leave this to a uh, user to uh, lower the bars for clients to onboard to the network. Here uh, under trust, you can uh, set up uh, how the client uh, should be configured for the radius server trust uh, and normally this is done automatically and it works uh, pretty well. If you need to change uh, things, for example, uh, if you need to trust more servers than only your uh, only your ClearPass server or if you um, want to uh, select specifically um, uh, uh, a more or one or more uh, certificate authorities uh, for the server certificate. Um, so for example, 
if you uh, want to have a backup uh, CA um, and want to move without uh, re-onboarding all your clients, you can uh, set it uh, here. Then here for um, the uh, Windows, you can, uh, if you like, you can enable uh, Microsoft NAP, uh, the endpoint checker. Uh, you can also um, set up here um, uh, the proxy in the next setting. Uh, you can set up an administrative uh, password, um, which will be used to enable uh, Microsoft NAP because NAP also requires you administrative access on the client um, and set uh, all uh, yeah, other settings like, uh, like proxy settings uh, if you want for uh, this connection. Then we uh, bind this up here in the configuration profiles under uh, deployment and provisioning. And here for the wired, um, basically only what we do is uh, give it a name. And here under networks, we uh, configure with network to configure. So the wired network, all the other settings are uh, set to default. And then uh, finally, and this is where it's uh, all bound together. We have here uh, our uh, provisioning settings. And uh, here in the provisioning settings, uh, we um, can select which certificate authority uh, we want to use. So I chose the new created certificate authority. Uh, here you can select um, what strength the client certificate uh, key will have. And uh, you can choose if the uh, uh, private key is created on the ClearPass server or on the device. So the most secure is to create it on the device because it doesn't need to leave the device. Uh, so there is no uh, dependency on a secure channel between the ClearPass server and the device. And uh, it works pretty well. So I uh, take this uh, settings typically. And here um, we select the uh, configuration profile. So in this case, it's the wired profile. Here below, we can also set some actions. Uh, for example, if the certificate is to be uh, expiring, we can send out an email to the user uh, to warn him uh, or her that the certificate is about to uh, expire. Then here under the supported devices, we can select which devices we want to onboard. So we uh, I typically put in all uh, devices. So we can onboard Android, Chromebooks, iOS, OS X, um, the legacy OS X, Ubuntu, Linux, uh, Windows, and we have web-based uh, provisioning, which uh, allows a user to uh, manually create a client certificate and put it on its own device. So this can be used for uh, devices that do not uh, support uh, automatic onboarding. Um, so you can uh, let people get a client certificate and use that client certificate uh, to manually configure the network connection and get access to the network. And then here is where the, um, where the page name is uh, created. So this page name is uh, wired onboard. And this wired onboard is um, the page that you uh, saw before um, here in uh, the, let me see, here it is. So uh, that's, uh, this wired onboard is the same as uh, this wired onboard. So um, this is the name of the onboarding page that will be uh, selected or will be redirected by uh, the switch or by the uh, captive portal. Um, and you can uh, change it here if you uh, if you like. So we can set in uh, the login form, how it looks like. Uh, here we can set the skin, and I like to use the Galleria skin because it gives a nice graphical uh, graphical site. Uh, you can set here the uh, text that are uh, used. So, uh, for example, if you want to change this text. To a local text, um, so um, uh, you want to uh, make it in your local language, or to change uh, the text, you can uh, change it here if you uh, if you like. Here in the footer, you can um, I added this one. Uh, you can if you're a guest, you can uh, click here to get guest access uh, access to this uh, network. So uh, you can completely uh, modify it as you want, and uh, for the onboarding process. 
uh, the provisioning is, uh, instructions, um, all the instructions. You can use the default messages or you can completely make it your own messages and uh, completely customize it to your environment. This is about the um, iris uh, provisioning. So here you can even uh, remove uh, this allow the user to remove the profile from the device. Um, you probably don't want to do that uh, because people cannot uh, remove it uh, uh, anymore and on a personal device that is uh, yeah, probably not what you like. And here in onboard client you can set um, for example the logo that is uh, shown in the onboarding process. Um, here you can set a code signing certificate uh, for the Windows uh, client. You saw that uh, during the provisioning I had to accept it because it didn't uh, recognize, it didn't trust the application. If you have a code signing certificate you can put it in here and uh, you will not have the uh, warnings again and it will uh, go much more smoothly uh, during that uh, provisioning. Um, all kinds of settings here. And the last one is for sponsorship uh, confirmation. So this is uh, what you need to do for um, the uh, the onboarding on uh, on the back end. And uh, a nice tip that I uh, I use a lot is that if you select this, you can uh, press here test, and it will uh, show you the page. And uh, even more important, it will show you the URL that is needed in the uh, redirect. So uh, you can see this URL. I uh, exactly copied and pasted it into the configuration for my switch. So that's it uh, for this extra edition about the backend for onboarding. Uh, in the next session we will be showing you uh, wired profiling on ClearPass, how to set it up and uh, there will be an additional setting uh, session about uh, ClearPass Exchange where we will integrate it into the Palo Alto Firewall. Hope to see you again in that session and thank you for watching today. If you have any comments, please put them under this video in the YouTube channel. This is Herman Robers for ABC Networking.